The first thing you notice here is the ridiculousness of five fully grown adults all chasing the ball at the same time. One is fine, we could definitely allow for two, and maybe even three if wanted. But once you get up to five, it looks silly. Yeah, it is nice that they are all so keen. But what on earth is Shahadat Hussain doing here? Going all the way from first slip to deep backward point just to field one ball. We get it mate, you're quick, but you weren't gonna outrun the guy at gully. And so when this all happened online, people laughed. But I want you to focus on something else here. Let me replay this for you. Bangladesh is playing Sri Lanka in Chattagra. Look at the score and the slip formation here. Four of them plus a gully. In Bangladesh against Sri Lanka, and they have them struggling after a huge first innings. Bangladesh actually go on to lose this match and the series, but it would be hard to look at Bangladesh cricket over the last few years and at least not say something has changed. If you love cricket on a deep spiritual level and want to be involved when no matches are being played, we have the game for you. Hit Wicket is so good that Harsha Bogle and me have backed it. And that's a lot of nerd energy behind one game. This is a strategic game of cricket, and it's not just about whacking your screen really, really hard with your finger. This isn't a game where you swipe all around to try and hit the ball. You work out what works best based on real life cricket situations. For instance, dot balls bring pressure, ones and twos lead to fours. There is no way you can just hit a six every ball or take wickets all the time. This is proper cricket, yet it still has some special gaming powers in there as well. And so this game is about playing, but also building and managing your team. You are the batter, bowler, owner, coach, captain. It's your dream, right? And there are no ads. It's just cricket. Download Hit Wicket now and bring out the cricket legend in you. Because Hit Wicket is a cricket game made for you and supported by other cricket nerds. Stick it in your pocket today. This was made using MV Place Insights. The same technology that supports the England and New Zealand test players is available to club cricketers as well. These are all the matches Bangladesh has played in Tess. It took them almost five years to win their first match, before which they only had three draws to their names. In the 2000s, they lost 52 out of 61 matches. They weren't even staying in games long enough to be able to get a draw. But then they move. Wins and draws become more normal for them in the following decade. In 2014, they won three matches in a row. Since the start of 2023, they have more wins than losses. And no draws. They're not quite a very good team at the moment, but they are certainly interesting. And they are without any doubt getting a lot better. And not just better, but different. Because when you think of Bangladesh, you think of turn. Specifically, a lot of left arm finger spin. They played their first test in November of 2000. And since then, they have the eighth best bowling average out of the 12 test nations with the turning ball. Their nearest neighbours are England, South Africa and New Zealand. That is quite clearly not the company you want to be in if you're an Asian nation. If we look at their spin averages by year, 2009 is the first time the runs per wicket drops below 30 in their test history. That actually happened three more times after that. And it is hard to look at this and not believe they are heading in the right direction when it comes to the turning ball. Shakib Al Hassan has been their most successful spinner of all time. There's no shock in that. But the thing worth noting here is that three of the four bowlers with over 100 wickets on this list are currently available to them. In fact, they didn't even play Tajal Islam in the last three tests across India and Pakistan. Of course, conditions played a part in that. But they now have so many spin options available to them that they're such a well-rounded attack. Nayim Hassan is another active spinner on this list. He has the best bowling average. Of course, that's only from a small sample size of 36 wickets. But the Ospinner played a part in their win against New Zealand last November. And here's my point. They have so many spinners at the moment, they are forgetting some of them in the attic. Now, quick bowling is not what you think of when it comes to Bangladesh. Do you want to have a look at their history of seam? You might want to actually close your eyes and head behind the couch before I start this one. Since their inception in Test Cricket, every team has a better seam bowling average than they do. In fact, their overall mark is 12 worse than Zimbabwe's 39. 12. They are on a very short list for the worst seam bowling team in the history of cricket. In fact, they might be the entire list. But the weird thing about that is they have pace bowling talent in general. I mean, look at their white ball seamers. Mashrafi Mortaza was a really good servant, even though he had no functioning knees. Mustafiza Rahman, when he's fit, is still incredible. But neither of them were able to replicate that when they played in test matches. 
It took their seamers five years to average less than 50 in a calendar year of Test Match cricket, and over two decades for them to ever get below the average of 30. In 2016, it was still more than 100. But when they've got it right, it's really gone well. In 2023, they averaged under 20 with seam bowling. Sharif al-Islam and Ebedot Hassan were the major contributors, while Taskin Ahmed took four wickets in the single game he played. But of course, Hassan Mahmood and Nahad Rana were two quicks who debuted this year. And let's be honest, their pace battery played a massive part in them beating Pakistan in that series. Even against India in the first test, they got absolutely smashed in that game. Their fast bowlers put them in a really good position on day one and also took a bunch of wickets in the second innings as well. If you throw in that win that they had in New Zealand a couple of years ago, and of course beating Pakistan, there's a lot of good stuff here. Before the last couple of years, it was 2013 was the last time their seamers actually outdid their tweakers. And that was a year that both averaged in the 40s. Even during the pace playing pandemic from 2018 to 2022, Bangladesh spinners still beat their seamers. So this is Bangladesh's best bowling attack in test cricket. At any point, they can choose from five high quality bowlers depending on the conditions. They have finger spinners who can turn the ball in opposite directions, an express pacer, left arm quick, and they have many different people that they can fit into a five man attack. So yes, they can bowl now. What about the runs? Part of the reason why Bangladesh had so few draws in their first decade of tests was because no one could actually stay in the middle for long enough. In the 2000s, their top seven batters did not average above 30 even once. And let's just remember, that was one of the greatest batting eras of all time. But you can see since that it's gotten a lot better. Their batting peaked from 2013 to 2015, and they were able to average above 30 for eight consecutive years. And when we compared their record with the global averages, you can see that the golf really starts reducing from 2010 onwards. In the 2020s, they have been above the mean in three of the five years so far. Now, they only played two matches in 2020 and four last year. But as a general trend, they're at least on par. But it's almost all because of their numbers five to eight being stars, while the rest of the top order, well, not doing too much. Since the start of 2017, there has only been one year where the top four batters have actually outperformed the next four. Essentially, their batting is upside down. Since 2017, Mushfiq El Rahim has averaged nearly 50 while batting in these positions. Linton Das has also scored over 40 runs per dismissal, while Shakib and Mahmoudullah are also in the high 30s club. Mahedi Hassan is close to 25, and his batting still hasn't fully developed yet. I mean, he's a specialist bowler who looks like he might be able to average around 30 with the bat, and maybe even slightly higher than that. So there has been no shortage of batting talent in these spots. And these are also players who add a secondary skill with the ball or behind the stumps, which increases their value for the team even more. And this pattern even pretty much holds up when we do a home and away split. Their lower order is simply doing more with the bat than their top four, regardless of where they are playing. Now, not outs also have a part to play with this, but the reason they're not going out is because they're batting better than the top order. But even in terms of runs per innings, the numbers five to eight are outperforming positions one to four. And I don't want you to think this is just the Bengals middle order being better than their own weak top order. In the 2010s, Bangladesh's number six to eight performed better than other teams, while number seven not being too far off. But since the start of 2020, numbers five, seven, and eight all average more, and number six is really close as well. But when you have a look at this, their top order is also closer to the global average than in the previous decade. Like in any way you stretch it, this team is actually much better at the moment. Now I want you to do something for me. I want you to close your eyes. Just take a moment and think about who is the third best Asian test side. Think about it, just ruminate a little bit. Why is it that when you close your eyes, you can see Bangladesh so clearly? It's because any team with five bowling options and batting to number eight is an issue. The lack of a top order means that they can't win all the time. That robs them of any kind of consistency, but it doesn't take away from great one-off performances, or in the case of Pakistan, a couple of them. Essentially, they have everything they need to cause problems for very good sides. Maybe not a great side like India at home, but even then they gave themselves some moments in that first test that you wouldn't normally expect them to. But in the past, the only issues with Bangladesh test cricket was how badly they played it. Bangladesh are still a problem, but often now, it's for the opposition. I have a book out with Abhishek Mukherjee, and it is called Overthrowing Cricket's Empire. And it's about the stories of how each team beat England for the first time. 
We go all the way back to the demon Fred Spothers getting annoyed at W.G. Grace for acting a little bit like Alex Carey. And then we come all the way to present times with Rashid Khan's England's Redemption. We cover every single team to beat England in a major international, but we also talk about the incredible stories like the barefoot basher from Fiji that almost played for New Zealand. In fact, this book is full of tales like that, like how Pakistan lost a top batter after he was on the run from an angry husband of a movie star he was having an affair with, and also how one future captain of his nation realized he might have to go out and bat at Lords and that he didn't own his own pads. Cricket was used as a tool by the empire, but what happens when those nations grow up and get good at it? Find Overthrowing Cricket's Empire on Amazon today.